Hey guys, my name's Jono, and welcome to a very quick review of the Odyssey 7Q as an external RAW recorder for the FS700. I say for the FS700 because I'm only going to speak about this in terms of using it with the FS700 because that's my main experience. I'm not going to go into specs in too much detail. If you want to see that, check out a spec sheet really quickly. Basically, I just want to tell you about my experience with the recorder and the FS700R and show you some of the stuff that I've shot with it because whenever I'm looking at reviews on this type of stuff, I always like to see something that someone shot with the actual recorder. So just starting with a few basics of the recorder, it comes as a monitor as well, which is a fantastic thing to have on the, the Sony FS700. It's probably the most accurate output that I've seen of what you're actually recording. So yeah, fantastic option as a monitor alone, but I guess the main reason why I purchased it was the raw recording. It records 2K, 4K resolutions, um, and now with a new firmware update from Odyssey, I believe it is recording 4K and RAW at the same time. I haven't actually updated the firmware yet, but I have recorded a lot of 2K RAW with it. It's unbelievable, it's, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Uh, the colours are just insane. The workflow is obviously a lot more than you know your standard sort of internal recording from the FS700, but uh, it's definitely worth it for those high-end productions. So how does it record? basically just records onto dual SSD cards, records onto these dual 256 gig SSD cards, you get about 51 minutes per card. It's more than enough for the types of video production that I've been using it for, 51 minutes per card, you know, you've almost got two hours of recording time there. You don't really need to stress too much about dumping data, you could probably just dump it almost as fast as you could record it. The only drawback about these cards is the system requires both cards to be in at the same time for recording to occur. Uh, another drawback is that you can't record different frame rates onto the same card. If you've recorded some uh, 24p stuff onto the card and then you want to switch up to 240 frames per second, you'll have to wipe the cards first before you can actually record that. They have fixed that in the latest firmware update. I haven't used it but I'm sure that it's fixed and um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty important thing for them to fix, so good on your convergent design. One of the quirky features that uh, kind of caught me by surprise was when you go to eject the cards, you actually have to properly eject them before you can actually see the files that have been written to them. The Odyssey kind of just validates all the files and then makes them available to your operating system. Uh, in terms of getting your data from these disks onto your computer, I just bought one of these little USB 3 solid state leads. These just fit straight onto the actual card itself and then you go straight into your USB 3 port on your computer if you have one. If you don't then you're, um, you know, you're stuck on USB 2 and it'll take a fair while to get that 256 gigs off the card. Uh, in terms of the recording format, how does it record your files? It records them as stacks of Cinema DNG files. If you're recording at 24p, it's basically just churning out 24 individual Cinema DNG files every second and dumping them onto these cards. Those files are 12-bit raw Cinema DNG files which you can then import into a program like DaVinci Resolve and apply a few algorithms to and you can render out some proxies and start editing. In terms of sound, it basically just dumps a WAV file into the same folder that your stack is in. So you end up with a whole bunch of folders titled Clip 1, Clip 2, Clip 3 and inside those folders is a stack of Cinema DNG files in a sequence plus a WAV file. Uh, in terms of the stability of this system, uh, it's only in its early days yet but uh, I've been using it for about six months now, haven't had any issues whatsoever like no dropped frames, no uh, files that are corrupt or anything like that that would potentially scare you away from the system. It's, it's run perfectly, touch wood, uh, since I've had it. As far as I know, this thing will take just about any battery on the market. It's really versatile in terms of the batteries that you can run it with, but you'll need to get a battery plate for it to actually run it. The battery plate is just this little plate that sits on the back here, and it just has this little connector, which goes into the bottom of the device. Once you have that, you can run your Sony L-series batteries 
with the RAW recorder, which is fantastic because it means I don't have to purchase new batteries to run the recorder. Um, in terms of connecting it to the Sony FS700, you have to connect it with BNC cables. These are, uh, you know, if you haven't used these cables before, they're pretty straightforward. From everything that I've been told, make sure you buy proper ones. They have this little pin in the middle which can get loose sometimes. Uh, if you don't have high quality cables, you can run into trouble down the track with that pin getting loose. But yeah, this just goes straight onto the bottom, straight into the camera. Um, in terms of the changes that you have to make to the camera, when you get your FS700R out, uh, you just have to change the picture profile from the default profile to the seventh picture profile. That'll just give you an accurate readout on the monitor here of what you're recording. Just to wrap up here, I know this is a really quick review, but basically I just want to give people some peace of mind who are thinking about purchasing this product um, to use in conjunction with their FS700. From everything that I've seen and done, it is a fantastic setup and it will get you into a raw workflow a lot cheaper than going out and buying a Red Epic or a Red Scarlet. It does cost uh, you know, approximately 5,000 um, Australian or, or US to get into this setup. Um, once you buy the cards, the recorder, the battery plate, probably an extra L-series battery if, if that's the type of battery you choose. Um, and then you, you have to purchase a license from um, Conversion Design to actually um, activate the device so that you can record RAW. The license is about $700 or $800 I think, but it is worth it. Th this is probably the best investment uh, aside from lenses that I've ever made uh, for my FS700. And it will take your crappy internal 8-bit compression camera and turn it into a massive 4K raw beast. So yeah, highly recommended as a product. And um, without further ado, here's a, a few things that I've shot on this exact setup with my FS700. Thanks for watching.